seeing that there are people who have depleted the income of the church in order to promote themselves. Right. They're very good. But you know that you're not going to do that. Blessings. Blessings to you guys. Blessings. God bless you all. Yes. We have something that we want to share with you guys. Yes. Listen to this pastor as he's getting interviewed. And it was so heartfelt. Mm. You know, listen, I got to keep it real with you. We don't know who he is, but we have seen his pictures around. Yeah. Um, so this is actually my first time listening to him. A lot of y'all might know him, but well, during this interview, I watched this video, me and my husband, mm -hmm. and we was like, we need to share this because it's some good people out here. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's great to share good news. Uh, yes, I love it. And uh, his, na his name is Pastor John Hannan. Uh, let's watch it. Being now one of the largest churches in Chicago, actually one of the largest churches in the nation, you know, period. Um, but you're flying under the radar. <laughs> what What are you scared of? Why no television? I mean, on why not go for the world? Why not? The television? message is pure. The message is. What are you scared of? What you scared of? I do Bishop. <laughs> you making me scared of you? Hold on. <laughs> um. Let me, let me say this. Um, I am the, I'm a very focused person. Mm -hmm. If you knew our testimony, and you look in this building, uh, we were only here for nine months, and then we had to move from here. We ended up going to the University of Illinois at a building that could seat 3,000. So we do four services on Sundays. Um, 7.30, 9.30, 11.30, and 1.30. Um, and he added to the church daily. So in this process, God has given us land to build. Yes. So I know that I have to get these people in a house. I have to stay, stabilize them. I got to put the flag in the ground. Mm. And with that being said, um, I was careful because I'm saying this respectfully. I've seen some preachers and pastors deplete the funds to promote themselves. Mm. That they couldn't do the assignment that God has given these mm. but the people. So I choose not to go on TV because I want to make sure that my people are stable in their house. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Second, but I want to challenge you on firstly. I'm okay. okay. Um, seeing that there are people who have depleted the income of the church in order to promote themselves. Right. They're very good. But you know that you're not going to do that. I can't. I got to get our people you, you know you're not going to do it, right? Right. Right. So that's no, that, that's no longer an issue, a benchmark, or anything not, like that. It's not. I've had television companies come after me, stations rather, and it's always like, I'd rather, I'd rather spend thousands going after the loss. I'd rather buy another bus. I'd rather buy another bill. I want to. I'm different, man. I understand. I'm different. I understand. Um... I love God. I love his people. Yeah. So you don't think that television and social media when you see people that love God when you see people that genuinely love God you know, they might, they, they might not be perfect, but you know. Because yeah. we're not looking for who is going to be 100% perfect. Right. But you, you see the desire in them. Right. For the people of God. That's right. all. That's all we, you know, that's all we want to see. Yes. That's all. Do you know if he go to this TV station... Every time he shows up, they will push him to call out seed. Yeah. A lot of them, you see that when they come upon uh, onto that TV stuff, they'll be pushed. And you have no other option. Then before you know it, because the gift is, you know, comes without repent repentance, you will still continue your church, your ministry. Then you in your head, oh, okay. Uh, that's a normal. That's normal way, you know. God is not even mad at me. God did not even. God is not taking away my gift. He makes you to keep on doing that. Mm -hmm. 
Man. Wow, he seems so sincere and emotional, and uh, it made me emotional. And it, it makes me it makes me have joy in my heart when I see a man of God, like my husband said, he might not be perfect, but the the concern he had for the body of Christ, mm. I wish more would. So many pastors are so focused on money. I, I wish. I love what you said. I wish just two percent is all we need. We don't it. need that fifty percent of pastors, you know, going after people's soul, not going after people's bag. What I would love to hear his testimony. Like, what did he go through to be so humble? Um, because that's <laughs> a lot of time. I know a lot of time people went through stuff. Yeah, you know. Then they have conscience. Yes. A lot of time, people don't go through anything, but they see the scam that these pastors are doing. A lot of them, a lot of them that have uh, are in ministry haven't went through anything, you know, and they don't care. Like I've been, I've been through the mud, the fire, uh, the storms, as well as my husband. And Man, believe me, when people, yeah, believe me, that there's a lot of people that have been through stuff. That still don't have a, a heart of. Pepper. I'm not saying a hundred percent, you know. But I will always look at that. I don't care what you went through, and if you don't care about people, I'm saying to myself, you don't. You haven't been through nothing. It wasn't good enough then. Whatever you went through was not good enough. But what I went through was good enough. I don't want to go through that again. And when I see someone write us in an email, and they have they are crying out to us through email and asking us to pray for them. I, I put my, my feet in their shoe and was like, I've been there. It hurts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't care. I don't care what they've been through. If they are scamming people in the body of Christ, which you went through was not good enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause you need to have conscience. Yes. The Bible said that Jesus looked onto them and have compassion passion on them. Mm -hmm. That's all. When you see people that come to your church as a pastor, have compassion. Don't have, don't, don't build up that evil mind. Okay, oh wow, I have crowd today. Let me, let me raise up this seed. Stop having all that evil mm -hmm. mind. There's a lot of people that came up there without even their transportation, without even knowing how they will eat tomorrow. Right. No, uh, they don't even have house rent all days. Mm -hmm. But you want to put pressure on them. Right. Uh, uh, Benny Hinn was telling people, I don't care what your condition is. I don't care what you're going through. You must go and get that money and so. Yeah, that's so sad. Currently. Yeah. So you, where, where is your heart as a believer? It's not a more that it will be a pastor like this, you know, come up and, you know, show that he cares. Members need to also show that they care. If your pastor is doing something that is really out of order or really push, uh, uh, kicking a lot of people out, you have to stand up because you care about soul. I was watching a, um, a YouTuber. They're not even in ministry. And they even showed a video because, you know, T.D. Jakes is going viral right now for for some things. And this person showed a clip of even TD Jake saying the same thing that you said, um, uh, Benny Hinn said, if I could find that video, we'll clip it in. <laughs> Most likely I don't find it, but I was shocked that, you know, Bishop TD Jakes was saying the same thing. I don't care what you've been through. You need to do this and you need to give to God. And I was like, what? It, it came out of his mouth. Like, I'm not shocked, but at the same time, I'm more shocked that the secular world is exposing this um, more than Christians, the Christian community, the believers, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, it's, it's something else, y'all. But back to about how they keep convincing him, though. I know. <laughs> like, let him be. Leave him alone. For goodness sake, leave this man alone. Let him do. It's, it's working for him. It's working for him. Because I, I heard he said he had the, one of the biggest churches in Chicago. It's working for him. Leave him alone. He don't need to be on TV. TV. And that's where as the body of Christ needs to understand. Just because a, a man of God or a ministry is not on television, that doesn't mean it's not successful. 
You can be successful without mm-hmm. being, on, being on television or being, being interviewed or being a big name. It's, you can still be successful in a, a ministry. A lot of... A, just God help them. A lot of people think, uh, be, you know, I need to connect to this pastor or connect to this uh, church or connect to this uh, TV show. So that shows that I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting... Uh, man. Only if people would know the truth. I don't even understand it sometimes. You know, a lot of people have uh, requested that me and my husband have interviews with them. You know, it's sweet. We are not against people having interviews. But at the same time, I'm over here like, why do they want to interview us? You know what I'm saying? We're not God. We're just humble servants preaching the word of God, exposing. Like, I sometimes I don't even get why do pastors need to be interviewed? I'm not saying it's wrong. I just don't get it. Like that's my mindset. I might do it in the future and I might not, you know, just something else. But, uh, we just need to know that God is God. Yeah. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and end. This is, he's the main source that we need to pay attention to. Yeah. Not these pastors out here, not these ministers. Our main source is to focus on him. In him alone. A winning soul. I love how souls. this man cried. You can see it's all about soul for mm-hmm. him. It's not because he know how much he can make on TV. Oh, he yeah. know how much they will offer him. But what shall it profit the man to gain the whole world and loses his soul? Amen. Thank you so much for watching. We love you guys. Bye. Bye, y'all.